Here we are in the site administration area. So first of all, we can look at notifications. These will give you some important notifications about your site. First of all, you can obviously check for updates. Make sure your Moodle site's nice and up to date. Always one of the most important things in terms of security and uh, stability. We can also see here that the cron script hasn't been run and the cron script is vitally important on a Moodle site. That is the thing that will trigger your backups. It will trigger the sending out of forum posts. Uh, lots of things in Moodle will rely on this cron script running probably every, every minute or every five minutes perhaps but it's absolutely essential to the operation of your site and if you're seeing this message you absolutely need to go and read about how to set up the cron on your server. We can also register your site and this is fairly useful. One thing that we'll want to do is make sure we have a sensible name for our site and not just Moodle. Um, perhaps spell that right. We can decide whether we're going to publish this site or not, so whether other people can see this in the list of sites in each country. And of course, probably give it a nice description. The language, the postal address and country, lots of information here if you want to be contacted or if you want to have a contact form on there so other people can actually contact you. And probably the most essential thing here is to be notified about updates to Moodle. Um, you always want to, to have the latest version, you always want to know about the latest version or latest stable version, I should probably say. Um, the rest of the information on this page is really data collection and Moodle will collect this information kind of quite anonymously but it does allow HQ to publish, for example, the number of users around the world. So, so you know, they can add all these figures together or the number of questions that are on registered Moodle sites. So it is worth considering registering your site. It does help Moodle as well. Advanced features. If you need some of these, they can be fairly important and really perhaps not considered advanced features they might be essential features for you so if you're running a site that that has outcomes and and uses outcomes in assessment you might need to switch this on it, it's off by default the same with portfolios if you want to export information to portfolios probably quite popular in the school sector then we need to make sure we've got that switched on there are a couple of other things as well which is worth um picking out here first of all notification email override this will allow people to have email messages sent to a different email address than the one you have set up in the system and my experience is that that can cause problems because students maybe associate an email address that they don't check very often or the mailbox is full or they they enter the address incorrectly so um, unless you've got a good reason for doing that, generally leave it with the, um, the default or the profile email. We can enable statistics. By default that's off because it could be quite a drain on your server if you have a very large site with lots of information to process. But statistics are required for a number of reasons. RSS feeds and blogs both uh, quite useful. Notice that RSS feeds is not enabled by default so that's probably something that you might want to switch on if you use RSS feeds within your site. And then some of the other things such as completion tracking and what the default setting for that is within your site and also restricted access. Now both of these things will have a huge impact on the way your courses on the site can be set up and, and run. So it's important, perhaps as an administrator, if you don't know what these things are doing, that you actually uh, talk to some of the teachers or the academic staff and make sure that these settings are appropriate for the, the way people are going to actually run courses on your site. The assignment upgrade helper is really just there for old Moodle sites, I think around Moodle 
sorry 2.2 perhaps where the assignment system changed quite dramatically in Moodle and any assignments that haven't been upgraded yet that there's a process to do that within Moodle so competencies again if you are the type of organization that's going to use competencies um, you know often vocational education for example we have some competency settings that are available obviously whether we're going to enable those as a as a site-wide feature or not and then whether those competencies and those mechanisms are going to actually be pushed to learners individual learning plans so if you don't want competencies this is where you would switch them off you can migrate what we call competency frameworks so if you if you have a framework that you use this year and it changes next year then you'd want to migrate it so you don't necessarily you don't really want to edit the old framework that you established because that will actually affect users the the way to do it is to migrate it which is really basically a, a duplicate and then you can edit that that new framework it is possible to import and export frameworks so if I've created a framework on this site I can then export it and the reason I might want to export it is because I can actually import it uh, again and then perhaps use that as a new um, standard or I may be taking a framework from one Moodle site to another and that can simply be a, a text file it's um, a fairly straightforward system and, and obviously if you look at that text file you can actually edit things manually or, or perhaps um, in an automated way using search and replace and so on uh, we can obviously create the frameworks ourselves where no frameworks on this site it's just a test site but if I wanted to add a new competency framework I'd give it a name and a description and then perhaps the important things are around these taxonomies or the, the terminology uh, that's being used so we may in our situation use something like an overall domain which has different indicators within it and within each indicator there's an outcome or a behavior that we need to monitor so you obviously as an administrator need to be doing this along with the academic staff and then the other part of competencies is obviously the learning plan which is what the students will see the learners will see and we can add learning plans and then assign competencies into those plans there's quite a lot to learn when you start looking at competencies and learning plans in Moodle but there is quite a lot of good documentation and um, it's one of those areas that really needs to, to be led by the academic side and and um, as an administrator you know you're working with them to set up this framework a framework that's going to work for for the organization we also have badges which can be awarded um, if you're familiar with with badges so some of the settings in here that are important is obviously we have uh, the, the name of the issuer so that's you know my company um, training limited whatever um, we might have some contact details the help desk it does provide a a link automatically to the default administrator on the site there's also a, a hash code which is used for sort of security around the badge and then whether we want to enable connection to external backpacks such as the um, the Mozilla backpack which uh, is a external system for collecting and displaying your badges and we also have an important option here about whether we're going to allow badges to be created and awarded at a course level rather than here at the site level and that may need to be thought through quite carefully for your organization we can then manage badges as the administrator we can add them and delete them and so on and we can add new badges sorry here where we um, you know specify the details around the badge the name a description perhaps uh, well almost certainly an image that's something that people want to see and then um, almost one of the most important things the expiry so whether that badge when it's issued exists forever 
or whether it's for a fixed date or whether it's for a relative date. So you could say that this badge is only relevant for one year after the um, issue date. In fact, it's probably easier to do that as one. Uh, well, 52 weeks perhaps would be a simpler way. So if you were, were um, issuing these badges for maybe health and safety training that's annual, then you may give the badge a validity of, of one year. Location settings, generally we would know what these are. You know, I'm in New Zealand, so I'm going to choose a default time zone of, of New Zealand. But this site may have people uh, on it as participants or teachers from around the world. So we can let people choose their own time zone if they wish. The default country, New Zealand, again, you know, we could choose different countries depending on where you are. And indeed, a default city if you wish. There are some IP lookup uh, options here as well. Just need to read through those and maybe download an external application and set that up on the server. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, how accurate they are uh, will really depend on a lot of uh, external factors that you're simply not in control of really. Mm -hmm.